5 plus 1 things space tourists should know before traveling to space. Number 5. If you're in a capsule, be prepared for a bumpy landing. The only route up to space is by rocket, but there are two ways down. A winged spacecraft like the Space Shuttle or Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, or a capsule like Apollo, Soyuz, or Blue Origin's New Shepard. Winged vehicles land on runways, while capsules descend under parachutes onto land or water. Capsules receive more G forces during re entry, especially near the end. Dr. Chow believes the parachute can be disconcerting. You'll strike the water or ground hard. Shock absorbing devices mitigate it. Soyuz hits the ground forcefully. Quite unexpected. Number 4. If you're going to do a spacewalk, the stakes are much higher for you and your crew. Sorry, but you won't be able to fly across space like George Clooney in gravity anytime soon. Most private astronauts will fly safely within their craft. Space Adventures, a private spaceflight company, will transport two customers into space in 2023, one of whom will spacewalk. Orbital flights with spacewalks require more training than suborbital missions since spacewalks are more perilous. If you're negligent with your tethers and you drift off into the abyss, there's not a whole lot anyone can come do for you," adds Dr. Parazinski. If a crewmate rescues you, you risk their life. He adds a spacewalker must consider their crewmates well, being as much as their own. Number 3. If you're spending a few days in space, be prepared for some bumps and bruises. You won't spend a lot of time in space during a suborbital flight, so you won't really need to worry about getting used to zero. G. However, some private spaceflight businesses want to place their customers in orbit for extended periods of time. No matter how hard you train for the experience, you will undoubtedly knock your head more than once if you spend a few days or maybe a few weeks in space. Dr. Parazinski quips, it's extremely funny seeing newbie astronauts the first day or two up on a mission. They were known as the bull in a china shop. They push off hard, breaking their knee or cracking their head. Number 2. Come up with a game plan for your few minutes in space. Plan how you'll spend your few minutes in weightlessness during suborbital trips. Bring a family photo or college pennant for a fun snapshot. Former astronauts Wally Skira and Tom Stafford famously posted a Beat Army sign on the window of their Gemini 6 spacecraft fun snapshot. Former astronauts Wally Skira and Tom Stafford famously posted a Beat Army sign on the window of their Gemini 6 spacecraft. Pre plan stupid astronaut tricks like flips and spins. Most importantly, schedule window, gazing time. Dr. Parazinski advises astronauts to enjoy the vista. Few individuals have seen this god's eye vision. Looking down at your planet from space is lovely. Number 1. The G forces experienced on launch and re-entry are not as intense as you might expect. If you've seen a live stream of an astronaut launch, a space movie, or mission, space at Walt Disney World's Epcot theme park, you know astronauts get squashed back into their seats during launch. They're feeling heavy G forces. Rocket launches are like driving fast or riding a roller coaster, except the pressures are larger and more continuous. The pros claim it's manageable, despite its frightfulness. Dr. Chow claims G forces aren't as bad as in the movies. If you're good enough to get medical approval for this trip, you'll handle the G forces. He also emphasizes that you'll likely go through centrifugal runs throughout your training to prepare for the sensation. You'll be strapped into a spinning machine that gives you significant G forces, like that spinning amusement park ride where you're forced against the wall and the floor collapses. Number 5 plus 1. Your only job on the flight will be to kick back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin offer suborbital flights, which are short hops to space. Your little trip will be easier than professional astronauts. Your spaceship won't need to be flown. Spaceflight providers decide. You won't have any obligation other than to enjoy the experience, and not kick anyone in the head, explains Dr. Parazinski. Flight duties are simple. Training programs for suborbital space travelers may only last a few days. Parazinski says that lacking training reduces confidence. Compare that to my space shuttle launch training, which lasted hundreds of hours. If something went wrong, we'd know what to do and not panic. 
Parazinski suggests talking to other flyers to calm your nerves. The best advice I can provide on launch day, and it's simple to say but harder to do, is to try to relax and enjoy the whole experience, adds Dr. Chow. If you can, talk to other trainees. You'll be surprised, remain calm. What do you think about our video? Please let us know in the comments area below. If you enjoyed this video and would want to hear from me again, please subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thank you for watching us.